Just a reminder to vote in this week's Locals Poll, where you decide what deck I take to Locals every single week. Without any further ado, I hope you enjoy the video. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel and for today we have the profile for the deck that we normally would have brought to Locals last week. Uh, something came up uh, in my personal life so I wasn't able to make it but it's all good. Everything's good. So you know no worries there. I'll be back next week and I might even bring this just for a practice game just to kind of get a feel for how it does in real life. I actually do already have a couple of ideas for some changes, so let me know what you guys think down below, and yeah, here's a look to what it looks like on paper, then we'll get to the card by card. Alright, so starting off with the monsters, we have three copies each of Dual Avatar Fist Yuhi and Dual Avatar Feet Kokoku. So Yuhi, he can uh, destroy another dual avatar monster you control to search for a dual avatar spell. And then when Kokoku is summoned, you can search for a trap. That's basically the only things, the only relevant effects that they have. Uh, well, I guess Yuhi actually does have a graveyard effect where if one of your fusions gets destroyed, it adds itself back to your hand. And that is actually the only monsters in the deck... I have seen some builds where they'll play like Honest and things like that, but for the thing I wanted to try out, that actually wouldn't work for it, so uh, you'll see that momentarily. But next, going into the in archetype spells, we first have three copies of the field spell, being Perfect Sync Aeun. Uh, when it's activated, you search one of your dual avatar monsters, usually going to be this guy. And then uh, if you control dual avatar monster, you can special summon a token, so that way you can pop it with the Yuhi to search the spell three copies of Dual Avatar Invitation. This is, of course, your main spell that you're going to be searching off of the Yuhi. Uh, you discard a card, and if you do spell summon as many Dual Avatar tokens as possible, these little guys here, and then you can fusion summon twice, basically. So, so yeah, that's basically the main gimmick of the deck, of course. Then we also have two copies of Dual Avatar Defeating Evil. Uh, this one is basically, it's kind of like an Icarus attack in a way. Uh, you target a dual avatar monster you control and a card your opponent controls, destroy both, and then if you destroyed one of your fusion monsters to do it, then you get an extra effect where you can either banish a card from your opponent's graveyard or draw a card. So unfortunately, that's actually it for the dual avatar spells. The deck does not have a lot of support, unfortunately. It really needs some more support. But, anyways, for now, we'll do what we can. And for now, I'm actually running the Morganites, which is why I'm not playing any sort of Honest or any sort of uh, additional hand traps or anything like that. <clears throat> So, with the Morganites, they both have the lingering effect where you cannot activate monster effects in the hand. So, Honest or anything like that is no good. And then, Succumbing Song Morganite. This is the newest one from Rage of the Abyss. Uh, basically, it makes it to where all of your monsters can attack your opponent's monsters twice. And then, it can uh, deal double battle damage. So this is just a way to help uh, really capitalize on uh, being able to break boards because some of the dual avatar fusion monsters can actually get pretty big. So this is just a way to capitalize on that, just to really put in some damage and help break boards. Time Tearing Morganite, you get two normal summons and you draw two during your draw phase. So that's really nice for uh, accumulating resources. Next, some of the more generic cards. Three copies of Fusion Deployment. Uh, basically, we can reveal any of our dual avatar fusion monsters and special summon the fusion material listed on it from the deck. I also am currently running two copies each of Battle Fusion and the A-Forces. Now, before you guys are all like, wait, whoa, why are you running those? I need some cards that I don't really care about to discard for Invitation. That's mainly what these are. 
I mean, of course, if the opportunity arises, you can actually use them because both of them just increase attack. Battle Fusion is basically an honest for your fusion monsters. And then the A Forces is just a continuous buff for each warrior you control. So if you control, you know, like two warriors, each warrior gains 200. So they do have some use, but their main use is actually to just be discarded for invitation. Next, one instant fusion to help get the uh, lion envoys. We'll get to those guys later. One snatch steel to help break boards. One change of heart to also help break boards. One monster reborn for recovery plays. One rota for searching. One pot of avarice just to recycle some of our resources back from the graveyard. Next, moving on to the trap cards. Two copies of Dual Avatar Compact, two Ascendants, and then one Return. So, Compact, uh, during the main phase, you banish a Dual Avatar spell from your grave. Or, well, it's a spell or trap, but you're mainly going to be using this on Invitation in order to fusion summon twice during your opponent's turn. That's the main thing. You can use it with defeating evil as well in order to uh, just get more interruption, but it's mainly for the fusion spell. Dual Avatar Ascendance. You target a dual avatar monster you control, destroy it, and if you do spell summon a dual avatar monster from your extra deck with a level one higher or one lower. So basically you can turn the level 4 into the level 5 fusion, etc, etc. This one also has a decent graveyard effect, so this one's actually a pretty good discard target for Invitation as well. Where you banish her from your grave to add one of your dual avatar monsters back to your hand. Then finally, one return. Uh, it's basically called the Haunted. And then if it's level 4 or lower, you get special summon a token. So you can special summon Yuhi back, pop the token to search Invitation, and just start going again. And then finally, rounding out the main deck, the final two trap cards, one Rivalry, one Gozen, just to kind of help slow things down a bit. So that is it for the main deck. Now we'll go to the extra deck. Of course, you will need some tokens. So I've got the Dual Avatar Spirit tokens here. It's actually kind of funny that these token cards actually exist. They came out in an OTS pack. They actually exist, but the deck has so little support. It's actually kind of funny. And then extra deck is going to go pretty quickly. It's just three of each fusion. So manifested Aeun, or the OCG name was Lion Envoys. But uh, basically, it gains effects based on which of the big fusion monsters is used as material. But you're not really going to be going for that. The main thing is going to be where you summon this guy in defense position, whether it's for instant fusion or if you're going first and you don't really know what your opponent's on, so you want to have more of a defensive play. Because when he gets destroyed, you special summon each of the main deck monsters from your deck, and they can't be destroyed by battle that turn. So that's its main use there. Next, two of Armored Ungil. So this one, while you control a dual avatar fusion monster that was fusion summoned using an effect monster, you can target a monster your opponent controls special summon from the extra deck and negate its effects. And then also, uh, it does have a second continuous effect where if a dual avatar fusion monster would be destroyed by a card effect, you can destroy a different dual avatar instead. So something that, like, targets something to destroy, you can substitute that. Next, Armored Agyo. So this one, uh, this is a good one to do when you copy Invitation with the Trap card to Fusion Summon to your opponent's turn. Because when he's Special Summoned, you can target an attack position monster your opponent controls and destroy it. And then while you control a dual avatar fusion that was fusion summoned using an effect monster, then all of your dual avatars gain 300 attack and defense. So again, it can make some of them pretty big 
which kind of is why I do the Morganites to try to get double damage and all that with two monster attacks. So next, we're getting into the big fusions now. Armored Mitsujaku, or excuse me, Empowered Mitsujaku. So this one, uh, this one requires the Kokoku as material. So that's why fusion deployment is handy. And then this one protects your dual avatar monsters from being destroyed by battle once per turn. And then during your main phase, you can return all spells and traps your opponent controls to the hand. And then while you control two or more fusion monsters, this also has a quick effect where when your opponent activates a monster effect, you can destroy that monster. It doesn't negate, unfortunately, but disruption is disruption. And then finally, the last fusion monster, this is the main guy that you're going to be going for, Empowered Kongyo. So this guy, he takes Yuhi, so again, fusion deployment. And then if this card battles, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects till the end of the damage step, so that's really nice. And then if it attacks after damage calc, you can actually return one monster your opponent controls to the hand. So again, just kind of good for breaking boards. And then one, when your opponent's spell or trap card or effect is activated that targets this guy on the field, you can negate it. So it does have a little bit of protection. Not all that much, but he does have a little bit. And yeah, that is actually it for the deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed. It's, it's a fun little deck. The concept of it is really, really cool. I just wish it had more support because, like I said, it's a really cool concept. I kind of want them to explore the route that they did with Sword, Soul, and Tanyi, where new monsters are released in the future, where it's actually like the corrupted ones, like uh, Draco Berserker is a corrupted, uh, is the is the Link, the Link 3 monster, but it's corrupted. And then like, there's the evil Sword, Soul monsters, like that one synchro, it's like Kishin Longwan or something. But yeah, so I do kind of want them to kind of explore that. And then of course, just more support so we can cut some of the more generic things that maybe don't, uh, you know, that things that aren't searchable, things of that nature. But yeah, I do hope you enjoyed. And I did mention I was thinking of some edits. I was actually thinking about maybe Maybe instead of like the change of heart and snatch steel, I was thinking of maybe putting in like Raigekis instead to just completely devastate the opponent. I don't know. I might try it. But let me know what you guys think. If you, if you prefer the snatch steel change of heart, or if you would rather see something like Raigeki or Dark Hole. But. Anyways, that's going to be it for the deck profile. This one's fun. I might actually just bring it to locals this week to just do a fun in-person game with it before the tournament. Actually, yeah, I'll probably do that. But, yeah, so let me know what you guys think. Like, subscribe on the Locals Poll, all that good stuff, and I'll see you next time.